Hey guys, Johnny here from PC and you, and today I'm coming out with another great Photoshop tutorial. This is just a really basic way of adding and removing elements in Photoshop. What we're going to be doing today is making my brother look like a horror person. Sorry about the circle over the face, by the way, he did not want to be famous for some reason. So yeah, what we're going to be doing is making him go catfishing. I'm going to be taking a picture of a cat that I found on the internet, I'm going to be editing it into this picture and I'm going to be teaching you how to do that and edit the extra bass out of the picture and keep the water looking natural. So yeah, first things first, let's open up our pictures. I already have my first one opened obviously, so I'm just going to go ahead and go open, open my next picture and yeah. Oh, by the way, this took me a long time to figure out. Um, if you don't have these windows and you can't find a way of like, going between your two projects, it's because of this little thing down here. It's a little bitch. So. If you go down here and hold, there's a bunch of different modes. Like you'll probably end up look like this. It was l when I was trying to film my first tutorial, I was getting so pissed off because I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> but yeah, it's called standard screen, the one that you want, and it just lets you go between windows like this easily. So yeah, as you can see, you can kind of see what I'm go where I'm going with this already, just from going like this. So first things first, let's cut out the cat. I'm gonna use Control Plus to zoom in a couple times and just drag this thing bigger. There's a couple of ways we can go about cutting out the cat too. I, no wait, there's three. I just really hate one of them, so I'm not going to go into detail about it. But yeah, the two I do recommend are lasso and magnetic lasso. Lasso tool, you guys probably all know what this is right now if you have any experience with Photoshop whatsoever. It's bait or paint for that matter. It's just kind of freehand, just outline what you want to select. Let go and it'll select it. I like to use this one more than magnetic lasso because it allows you to go into more detail and it allows you you may have to move a bit slower but it works better on pictures like this because magnetic lasso basically what it does is it kind of sticks to a color but say you're trying to cut something out of a real picture with colors everywhere it's just going to start sticking to everything and stick to random colors and especially if you're trying to cut something out of a forest it's hell so yeah for the purpose of the time though I'm gonna be using magnetic lasso just so I can go faster and not bore you before you start cutting out you're gonna wanna if you're using magnetic you're gonna wanna go up here and change the frequency to something high like 90 or 100 or something so I'll explain why right now I guess if you can see I don't know if you'll be able to see those but there's little squares on that line basically when you're changing the frequency you're changing how often those squares come up you might think this is really stupid and there's no point, but there is. The more squares you have, the more detailed and intricate your, your intricate intricate your cut your what you cut out is going to be. If you have it something low like 30, those dots are going to be far apart. And if you're trying to do a curve, it's just going to cut off half. Like if I was trying to do this cat's body on like 20, it would just cut off pretty much his stomach. So yeah, you're going to want to set the frequency high and just start cutting out. Hopefully I won't mess up this time. This is like my fifth or sixth time trying to shoot this tutorial. So I have always... Oh, see, I just did something. But I mess up like every time. Last time I cut off his feet, the time before that, I don't know. I don't even know how. I was so pumped because I finally did this perfect. And I ended up cutting a hole in his arm, which was really weird. But yeah, don't... Oh yeah, by the way, don't like freak out and have a bitch fit if you get a bit of the background like something that's not what you're trying to cut out because you I will show you how to get this out of the picture later because as you can see I've been actually you probably can't see it, it's probably too small but I've been getting lots of yellow in this because I'm just trying to go fast so I can teach you guys how to do awesome things in Photoshop so yeah I'm just going on so I don't bore you too much I'm probably just annoying you now though but there we're pretty much done so once you have that don't do what I've done so many times and just bring the thing down on the bottom of the screen. Double click before you do that. Otherwise, you're going to end up cutting off half your cat. That's what I did two times, three times ago. So, once you've double clicked and you have that outline, if you're happy with it, it looks good, just click on the move cursor and drag it into your picture. As you can see, it's going to be really small, but you can resize this no problem. Just grab the corner, drag it big. You probably don't worry if it looks like crap because when you double click on it it just the pixels fix themselves and it looks nice 
Yeah, as you can see, I have yellow here, yellow there, yellow everywhere. So to delete this, just go to the background layer and click on the eye so you can work with this layer better to erase. So basically just can control plus a couple times, get it nice and big so you don't end up cutting cat's eye off or something or whatever you're editing. And click the eraser and up here you can change the size, the bigger, the more it erases obviously. And yeah, just go ahead and cut out what you don't want. I'll just cut to getting sick right now. Um, as you can see, if you're watching closely, the toy covers like half of his arm. I'll be doing kind of just what I'll be showing you guys later with how to reanimate the water. I'm going to actually replace his arm with his rest of his arm. So go, go here. What I'm going to do is go here and hit clone stamp tool. Then this is going to let me just kind of take a stamp of somewhere else and whenever I click it'll just copy that. So to get your anchor point, this is the point that it's going to be copying, hit alt and click wherever you are. Then whenever you click it's going to be stamping there. So as you can see now I'm kind of getting his arm back. It doesn't look that good but whatever you can edit it as you want. You know maybe get some stripes on there. It looks good enough when you zoom out. It looks fine. So yeah that's just a really quick easy way to do it I'll show you a couple different ways of doing stuff like that later on when I'm trying to reanimate the water but for now that's good there so yeah once you got that just go ahead and zoom out and um sorry I'm just trying to find the there we go and just make your back layer visible and there now we've got a nice looking cat looks nice and real nice and normal and now we're going to be going to the tricky part. I'm going to be teaching you how to get rid of the water. Or not get, get rid of the bass and replace it with natural looking water. Now there's a couple ways to go, in, go about doing this. And I will teach you two ways that I find really good for it. <sighs> so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. The first way I'm going to teach you I think is really good for replacing big areas. Like not like giant like fields or anything but say I want to replace the whole side of this fish or that I'm going to clone stamp everything we're going to go to the select tool just get the square one select the area beside it as big as you need control copy all right make sure your background layer is selected or whatever layer that what you want to copy is on control copy paste and then just go to the move tool and drag it over see if you're looking carefully you can kind of see lines and choppiness but I, I'll teach you how to get rid of this tool so when you're doing this method the blur the smudge tool is your best friend especially with water with water if you use the smudge tool you can just kind of click and drag it along a bit and just blend it in and make it look really natural this really helps I find to blend edges you can use there's other settings you can use, you can mess around with those, but I find this is really good for just getting rid of defined edges. Now my, the way, I don't really tend to do it this way, because I find if you look out and look at it, it does look kind of blurry if you look closely. So the way I do it is the way I taught you earlier using clone stamp. I'll go into more detail about that now, I guess. So, I just this is basically going to let you clone a point and put it over and over again, but I like it for water too, because if you the, the if you hold alt and click it gives you an anchor point and this is where you're going to be cloning but after your first click the anchor point moves up and down with your mouse so like you you probably don't understand what i mean now but see if i click here the anchor point stays there but if then if i go up the anchor point goes up too and i find this is really good for water cuz it helps you to get the shading looking real and stuff too and just it's really great. Uh, this is the now I think I'm done. I want to resize the picture a bit. Mess around with it, get it how you like it. Back. So now we've got this awesome picture of my brother, the faceless man, catching a fish. Isn't he a horrible person? So yeah, thanks for watching my tutorial. Please comment it, rate it, and subscribe to me. <laughs> and yeah, tune in next time for another great Photoshop tutorial.
This is Johnny from PC Gaming. Sucrist out.